Joshua Chairman, he's called a Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible. He reads the Bible, but then not as an authoritative book for his faith, but as the book of a faith that he cannot accept. He therefore reads the Bible not to hear what it has to say for his faith, but as a book that in some way he cannot accept and that therefore must be attacked. He can, he can use the Bible to find arguments against the Bible and against Christianity. But he's not reading the Bible like I do. I can also call myself a scholar, but then a Christian scholar of the Christian Bible. But then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not speaking to you tonight as solely a scholar, but as a Christian, a Christian scholar who believes in Jesus Christ, who believes that He died on the cross to give eternal life to me. It is against this background that I want to tell you about the Bible. I believe that God gave us the Bible and that it contains everything that we need to know Him, everything that we need to know to be saved and to live as His children in this world. The Bible is actually a collection of books that was written in the course of many centuries by men driven by the Spirit of God as is written in the second letter of Peter, the first chapter, verses 20 and 21. And I'm going to read it to you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to read to you from the Bible quite often tonight. Above all, above all else, however, remember that no one can explain by himself a prophecy in the Scriptures. For no prophetic message ever came just from the will of man. But men were under the control of the Holy Spirit as they spoke the message that came from God. God used these men to write His words also for us. These men were used, but in the final instance, or rather one should say in the first instance, it is God speaking. Therefore, I believe that the Bible was inspired by God and given to His children to guide them in the truth, as can be seen from the second letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. I'll read it to you again. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instruction for right living, so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deed. This revelation by God came at different times and in many ways, but it is the Word of God. The most important part of this revelation was revealed when Jesus came to this world and made known the will of God, as can be seen from the first couple of verses of the letter to the Hebrews. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors many times and in many ways through the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us through his, son, through his Son. He is the one through whom God created the universe, the one whom God has chosen to possess all things at the end. He reflects the brightness of God's glory. It is the exact likeness of God's own being. As can be seen from this passage, the Bible consists of two main parts, what we call the Old Testament, and the New Testament. The Old Testament, as you know, is the same as the Hebrew Bible. But for a Christian, you cannot read the Old Testament without the New, and the New without the Old. 
The Old Testament tells about us about the creation of the world and mankind, of man's fall into sin, of death as the penalty for sin. It also promises the deliverance that God will bring about. <clears throat> In this way, the Old Testament points forward to the future, to the coming of the Messiah, the Christ, that would bring deliverance from sin. <clears throat> the New Testament speaks about the coming of the Christ, of His life, of His death on the cross of Calvary, His resurrection from death, his ascension to heaven and the New Testament also promises that at the end of time he will come again to judge the living and the dead. The only way to salvation as proclaimed by the Bible is through Jesus Christ as can be seen from the gospel according to John Chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. For God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son, so that every, everyone who believes in Him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its Savior. Whoever believes in the Son, in the Son is not judged. But whoever does not believe, has already been judged because he has not believed in God's only Son. This message is repeated later on in this Gospel, in chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. This is something, ladies and gentlemen, that cannot be proven by argument or by scholarly discussion, but it, it is an article of faith. This I believe, and this belief is the starting point for me as a Christian. By the way, I'm reading for you tonight from the Bible in a fairly recent English translation called the Good News Bible. And Good News the translation of the Greek word, word for gospel. As you all know, the two testaments of the Bible were originally written in Greek for the New Testament and Hebrew for the Old. The authoritative text of the Bible is therefore the original Greek and Hebrew and not the translations that we may use. We do not have the original manuscripts of the Bible but we have a standard Greek and Hebrew text which we accept as authoritative. But translation of the Bible is necessary to enable every person to hear this good news in his own language. In this the church is following what happened on the day of Pentecost when on that day that the Holy Spirit came to this world. On that day, a large number of people were assembled in Jerusalem. And when and people speaking many different languages, when the Spirit came, the Apostles started proclaiming the Word of God in many different languages. This can be seen from Acts chapter 2 verses 5 to 11. They were Jews living in Jerusalem Religious men who had come from every country in the world. When they heard the noise, that's the noise of the apostles speaking, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because each one of them heard the believers speaking in his own language. In amazement and wonder they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our native languages? Then the writer goes on to name all the different peoples that were assembled there. They say, if all of us hear them speaking in our languages about the great things that God has done. This, from this we can see that they all hear the gospel in their own language. Therefore we all also.